but how long have you been fighting over there? I guess I'd live right in the middle of nowhere. It makes sense to kind of go and pick stuff. And yeah, and it didn't actually kind of get rid of the supermarket trips, but it just kind of made the whole thing a bit more interesting. Yeah. Um, just to get out to the open. And I think most people start foraging just by picking blackberries. And that's all it is, is just picking wild stuff. You go from the blackberries to maybe hawthorn berries or rowan, sorry, I'm waving this around. But... No, it's all right. <laughs> So maybe rowan berries, and then you start getting interested in leaves, they've got mints and sorrels and, you know, sh tree shoots as well can be very tasty things to kind of add into foraging. Started collecting recipes, some other people, some of my own, started making stuff up and then found, found that I'd got enough material for a book, so I published a book about it, so like you. Be this book? Yes, it would! <laughs> In every available store that sells books. From my front door, I'd have brambles, I'd have windberries, I'd have sorrel, I'd have nettles, I'd have hawthorn leaves, hawthorn berries, rowan. as I possibly can, which is actually, by the way, packed with vitamin C. Um, but they all have stones inside them. We don't really, we don't want stones because it's meant to be a smooth, you know, sauce like a ketchup. And we've got as much of this through as we possibly can. We're going to cook it up with some shallots, given by my neighbour, Jack, <laughs> and various spices. So what Carl's doing here is he's mixing up pancake batter because we try to use a selection of um, wild ingredients. I've not used this flour before for pancakes. I'm going to try. I'm going to try make thin pancakes. I think. Um, and we thought what we do with these is there's another crepe, from bacon with soju. Here are the soju, the gin, it's got elsewhere, um, and brambles and um, blueberries. Admittedly, these weren't foraged. So there's not a lot of brown. Yeah. See, you could add a little bit of white flour in there, but I don't want to. I just want to use. I just want to stick to the Talga flour, really. What I'm going to do is we're going to try and make some sweets out of these that I haven't done before, but I've got the recipe and apparently it works really well in Alaska. Um, so these are Rosa Rugosa roast hips, and the reason I'm using them is because they're nice and big and they're very easy to get all the little, um, the little furry bits out that are actually not poisonous, but they are an irritant. They taste amazing. Lots of people have them in the gardens and they're the easiest ones to get the furry bits out of because they're big. Pop a few berries in the pan. That starts to caramelise. That's a blonde made, let that be juiced down a little now. Put it in the pancake. Now you can have this with ice cream. Cream. That's seriously nice. It's not too sweet. I didn't think that flour would. It's 
it's a bit tricky to, to get the balance, but I think I've got it. If I compare it to a wild rose hip, I mean, these are quite these are quite big wild rose hips. They can be as small as that. So you can imagine what the difference is in size and sort of trying because it's the skins we want and sort of trying to get the um, you know the, uh, the pips out of those. It takes ages. So we're going to get these ones. Um, Hang on a second, Master Chef. What? Go on, you first. Your and then the pancakes. Drops down there. It has, it has yeah. slow gin. What's not to like? Exactly. You know. It's sugar and lemon juice in a pan of fire, wrapped in sugar. If you get past the brown sugar, it really can't work. I said there's too much sugar in it, actually. So I like that. Yeah. So, you know, we forget about these things because we don't need them anymore. 